James Want. We're here on day three. Uh, and I'm still having fun. I'm a little <laughs> bit tired. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It was a 5.30 till, 5.30 a.m. till 10 p.m. So oh, even longer. Night. Yeah. Uh, we had a lovely James. dinner at, uh, at... Lovely dinner at the Four Seasons. At the Four Seasons, which was so extra, the Four Seasons Geneva. It was dripping in... Cash. Cash money. Um, um, yeah, we had... Yeah, we drank some nice wine with the Grand Seiko team. Had a lovely dinner... Uh, and we had, there was a very special... Very, very special gentleman sat down at the table next to us. Uh, Mr. Jean-Claude Bieber himself with his family. Obviously didn't want to interrupt uh, a bit of family time, but just cool to see him uh, hanging around. Yeah, in the flesh and in Geneva and in the in Four Geneva. Seasons. Interestingly, Nick, first time you ever met him was in a Four Seasons in another country. In the Four Seasons in Dubai. I uh, somehow got my way into a Hublot collector's dinner. Uh, believe it or not, Jean-Claude Bieber, effectively the godfather of the Swiss watch industry, uh, owns a cheese farm, and pretty much wherever he goes on uh, on business trips, he's bringing with him a bit of his own cheese, and uh, yeah. You got to sample some cheese. <laughs> got to sample some cheese, it was quite good. Today, we're going to keep this one short a little bit. Today we started off with another visit to Cartier. Yeah, we made to Cartier and saw the things yesterday, that we saw the things that we didn't see yesterday. Yeah, so there was a few little new pieces. Uh, Tank Chinois, yeah, which, which was really cool. Of, uh, Eastern Chinese inspired from the kind of nineteen thirties aesthetic, quite cool. We can cut to a little bit of that, and then we were straight on to Tudor, which uh, is it's behind right us here. It doesn't look like too much from the front. We'll go on a tour tomorrow week and show you. Uh, it's quite a good looking boutique inside. So each so the Tudor sign is one level. The next is another level. So it's got a dining precinct upstairs, meeting rooms, all meeting rooms, the works, some arcade games and stuff. It's pretty out there. What was your favourite Tudor? Oh, easily the Black Bay Pro. I think it's really going to be considered one of the top watches of the show. Yeah. Great. One of the best watches of the year, by far. Yeah. 39mm steel bezel GMT. Absol about five and a half grand. Uh, comes on a bracelet. And... Uh, yeah, look, absolutely reeks. of if, if you like 1665 Explorer 2 Rolex, you are going to love this watch. It is essentially a, a homage a to it. It's a great looking piece of kit. And... Yeah, it comes on a new leather and rubber hybrid strap, which was really nice. Yeah. And, yeah, My favorite NATO was the, uh, the steel and gold GMT, nicknamed the root beer. Um, effectively sort of like a black and brown bezel with a kind of two-tone case and dial. Um, it's the slightly larger size of Black Bay, uh, so 41 millimetres, yeah. but still quite compelling. I find it just a little bit chunky. It's a, it's it's not a small watch, it's quite thick. It'd probably be, I don't know, maybe 12 or 13 mil, maybe not quite that much, maybe 11 or 12 mil is thick. Um, but I just love a bit of two-tone, and that sort of rose gold tone yeah. really just warms it up. And it, uh, I, think it's a, I think it looks good in two-tone, that watch. It looks really, really good. Um, a lot of presence. Absolutely. After Tudor, we're off to back to Tag Heuer, um, which was basically just a little bit of a deeper dive uh, with one of the design team guys into some of the designs. And of we the, saw the um, Solograph, the which was nice. and the Solograph, which as well. we don't have any footage of because it was the darkest room ever. It was the darkest room. We do have a photo of the loom though, so we can cut to that right now. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and just a cool, really cool watch. So effectively, it's got a solar panel on the dial. Two minutes of direct sunlight will power it for an entire day. 200 meters of water resistance. Um, it doesn't have a battery per se, but apparently it's got some some sort of charge, yeah. uh, charging storage Heart. system, which sort of sounds like a battery to me, but apparently it's not. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you don't wear it for a couple of days, it'll still. And what uh, is it? 3,800 Swiss francs. 3,800 Swiss francs, which is about five five and a half. Grams. Limited run this year, 250 pieces, but then it'll sort of it'll go into more uh, yeah, into man. proper production next year. Come, comes on a rubber strap. 40 mil steel case black the sizing DLC. was impeccable really yeah, great absolutely perfect an exciting new direction for tag i think aqua race is really taking them yeah. into a great you know a great spot 100 percent, yeah um and then following that we had a bit of lunch had a bit of lunch uh then we're off to see panerai so panerai i'm sure the boss hunting audience is in, intimately familiar with panerai uh obviously big uh italian founded dive watches um the the priority, or well, the kind of the, the focus this year was the 44 millimeter cases with a lot of emphasis on their sustainability. Sustainability. So they're producing watches with, I think it was 54 or 52% recycled materials. Um, last year they sort of debuted this technology with a watch that was 94% recycled. Yeah, and very expensive. Extremely expensive. It was 40 or $50,000 Australian, I think it was. <laughs> 
30,000 Swiss francs or Yeah, something. so we saw E-Steel today in a bunch of different colours. The yep. green was very cool, the blue was very cool. Yeah. Carbotech. Carbotech, very lightweight, sort of semi-carbon material. 15% lighter than titanium. There you go. I mean, it's a really, really cool, cool bit of kit. Um, and, and they had the a Panerai, really good spot. And they had a fantastic spot yeah. as well. Um, the boutique was genuinely exceptional. Uh, obviously, being such a kind of underwater focused brand, they pretty much recreated an underwater landscape with uh, sharks swimming around on the walls. It was walls like an aquarium. It was like an aquarium. It was really, really cool. And they also had possibly the best deployment of augmented reality technology I may have ever seen in my life, which was these iPads that were kind of rotating around. Uh, we can cut to the a bit sample of video products. Of it. Yeah, rotating yeah. around the sample products. The iPad had the camera on, it would arrive at the sample product. The sample product had a little QR code next to it. It would bring up all of this uh, sort of. All the know, information about All the information about, about the watch, the um, with the watch still kind of visible there. So, yeah, really, really cool. Uh, really, really cool technology the Panerai was using. Now we've got a bit of a break this afternoon. Uh, thank God we can actually do a bit of work rather than running around all day appointment to appointment, which I'm quite looking and forward to. And then we are to. going to see Hans Zimmer tonight with IWC, which will be great. We it's, just saw Lewis Hamilton before. We just he saw was Lewis at Hamilton. IWC. Yeah. Tonight. Hans Zimmer tonight with uh, IWC, and Hans we'll Zimmer. give you a bit of a debrief tomorrow. But we yeah, will. we'll try to keep it a bit shorter today. And Peace and love. See, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh.